Um, you guys have known that, that we, you've been introduced to the, the outdoor gear that we've been doing for a long time. And uh, we've, we've always felt that it was a pretty robust product. So one of the things that we've done now is we've taken those products and now have them certified for hazardous location operation. So let me just spend a few minutes on what this means. Um, the, 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 one of the terms that gets thrown out is explosion proof. So first of all, explosion proof does not mean that the device will survive an explosion. <laughs> it means that the device will not initiate an explosion, right? So um, in the context of, of, of the industry, you have a couple of different classes. You have what's called class one div one in North America. And in, uh, in, in Europe, you have ATEX zone one uh, or zone zero. And those are environments where you have persistent explosive atmospheres. So you could be in a place where the, you know, there's continuous outgassing um, of, of, of potentially explosive materials. You have to put your units into an enclosure that if, a, if an explosion in, in, initiates inside the enclosure, it doesn't propagate outside of the enclosure. So today, Aruba does those solutions. We do that with a combination of, uh, of partners. We've got three major partners that we work with and, and, a, and a smattering of others. Um, so we, we do have solutions today where the outdoor gear is placed in, into these enclosures and we're servicing class one, div one areas. Now, one of the solutions is you know, a fairly massive stainless steel machined uh, uh, housing. So uh, you can imagine there's a significant amount of, ex of expense and uh, installation complexity with that. In, cla in fact, class one div one environments require the installers to be certified. They actually have to, the manufacturer of the enclosure actually has to do the installation. So the other thing that, that you can do is, uh, the other class is class one zone two or class one div two. Uh, and in Europe, it's called ATEX Zone 2. So in Zone 2, these are environments that are generally adjacent to a Class 1 area, a Class 1 Div 1 area. In other words, if there's something abnormal going on, you could have a brief exposure of explosive atmosphere. So in that situation, you really just need to have a unit that's, that's properly sealed up. You have to, be, you have, to have the right materials uh, selected. Um, but the advantage of that is if you've got a properly rated product, th this is something that can be self-installed um, because it, the, 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 generally the equipment is, is natively supported. Um, but of course, you know, it, again, we had been using enclosures for this. Um, there was, there's, has been one other example of an 11N class one div two solution in the market for some time. Um, so, you know, it was time to sort of get the, the industry onto something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more relevant. So what we did, is we decided to actually build product for class one uh, div two solutions. So this is the product. So for many of you that have been with us for a while, you'll recognize this is an AP375. In fact, it is an AP375. The one major difference is, is the AC port is missing. And the reason for that is, is that it exposed conductors on the outside, which is a no-no for, uh, for rated environments. But other than that, um, we have the ability now to extend all of, the, all of the goodness that comes with 11AC Wave 2 into your industrial environment, right? Increasingly, we're seeing applications, IoT is driving into that space. Uh, AC isn't the greatest thing for battery-powered devices, but there's lots of wired devices in those spaces. There's certainly lots of reasons why uh, people with hardened tablets are going to those locations to service equipment. Um, they want to have the access to the latest data rates, you know, and, and because of the fact that we've been able to adapt this, you know, stay tuned, but, uh, you know, you can expect that uh, this is something we should be able to carry over into uh, 11AX when that happens. So this, but today, this brings all of the functionality of 375s. These units configure the same way as a 375. They're deployed the same way as the 375. We have the ease of install. One of the things about rated areas, typically a networking person would not be allowed into those rated areas, right? So, so the, just, just from a corporate policy perspective and also OSHA safety rules and so forth, you have, to re, you have to get special training to access those places. So the ease of install that we've had with the 375 solution is maintained. Um, we've got simple bracket systems. These things get bolted on, they get slid in, and if there's ever a brake fix situation, it's one bolt, you take the chassis out, and you replace it, right? So that, that's the type of thing that a man with a wrench or a woman with a wrench in a factory environment can go and do themselves, right? You don't need to have a specialized resource actually in the, in the rated area. 
Um, the 375s and the, the 300 series access points from Aruba have supported BLE, and so that we'll be extending our IoT um, infrastructure into those into those environments. As you know, uh, we've, we've been enabling BLE uh, functionality based on the radio inside. Our Meridian location services and so forth are also now going to be available in those spaces. Obviously, if you were putting a unit into a metal enclosure, that does bad things to things like BLE, which is has an embedded antenna. Um, Client match still works, air match still works, so the, the frequency planning is, is, is all done. And because this unit has integrated antennas, the only two chassis that, we, that we're certifying are the 375 and the 377. Again, from the point of view of installation complexity and making it so that the, a, a, a relatively untrained person can do that work, we don't believe that external antennas are appropriate for that type of an environment. Um, they're also, they also tend to be, <laughs> if you've got an environment with heavy equipment or forklifts, it tends to be a bit of a blood sport for the, the operators to see if they can knock all the antennas off the access points. Uh, this is, that's direct feedback from a variety of customers. For clarification, is this certified for C1D1 and C1D2? or just No, this is Class 1 Div 2. Okay. For Class 1 Div 1, we will continue to work uh, with, with our enclosure partners. Because okay. again, this one, it, you can imagine, it's a plastic enclosure. If the explosion goes off inside, it's going to blow the sides out and, and the, the hot products will propagate into the space. But this addresses probably, if you look at an average location like an oil refinery, right? Maybe a half a percent of your area would be a Class 1 Div 1 area. Maybe 25% of your area would be class one div two, and the rest of it would be unrated. Now the advantage as well is that because we're basing this effectively on currently on the shelf gear to, to take a term out of the out of the federal out of the sort of the the federal space, um, the price differential for this unit is not large. So this means that uh, um, entities will not necessarily need to differentiate having class one div two and an and unrated product. They can now buy a single, a single part and deploy that everywhere because the, 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 the cost uplift associated with the rated part is not huge. Right? And, and again, that's, that's an operational complexity, operational ease um, that I think is important for those, for those environments because again, you're taking relatively untrained people from the networking pers perspective and having them deploy and redeploy this gear in the case of a break fix. Um, so, you know, so again, we, we're taking the BLE in, we're taking all the services in. You know, Chuck mentioned Passpoint. This is going to extend Passpoint into those environments as well. So now you have a neutral host voice solution and messaging services in your industrial production areas, right? Without having to do anything special or deploy any other gear. The costs associated with pulling incremental uh, Cat5 into those spaces, as you might imagine, getting a maintenance window is almost impossible. And the costs associated with it, you, again, you need rated personnel that know how to do rated conduit in many cases. Um, and then the, the, chassis, uh, the chassis then get deployed afterwards. So this unit, um, as, as we innovated on this chassis, so it is, an, it is certified with the, the standard cable gland on it, but it also lends itself um, to bringing conduit directly to the chassis as well. And depending on the operating environment, either of those is gonna be acceptable. Obviously, you could just, if you could just string an ethernet cable, um, as long as that, that works uh, for, for the operations team, um, that's going to that's going to mean things are going to be relatively straightforward to do. Is 802.3OE PoE, um, so you can use a standard switch. You can bring a hardened PoE solution. Um, there's a number of them. Uh, that either you can either buy PoE solutions that are rated, or in many cases, if you've got a, a, an, a, an IDF uh, somewhere in the facility, that space is typically unrated. So you can run an Ethernet cable from an unrated space to a rated space without causing any issues. And that is about all I had to say for today. Um, I have a question from the yep. internet. Uh, plans for IoT integration with this platform? Um, so today it's BLE. Um, BLE only. So, so, and, and that's true for the 300 series generally from Aruba. Um, our 11 AC, that's, or the 11 AC wave two parts. Um, as we move forward, as you know, in, in, our, in our 11 AX solutions, we're bringing uh, BLE and 15.4 and, uh, radio capability. So. You know, now that we've kind of cracked the nut on this, uh, understanding this, this is something that, you know, once we get the products out and stabilized, it's something that we'll be looking at for future generations. And so 15.4 would be a future capability with the product.